Why, hello there. Welcome to the one and only Inside Star Citizen Review. I've been notified that there are a lot of other people that are copying off of me. I, If you don't believe me, you can go back to my channel. You can see the original dates of when I started this. In fact, it was years and years ago before this was actually the, uh, before it was Inside Star Citizen. Uh, like around the verse, we had the review show. And uh, a fan today had notified me. I'm like, hey, DG. Are you upset that these other people are pretty much taking all of your ideas? Uh, and uh, no, no, I am not. Take a big, Take step, a big back step back and back. literally fuck your own face! <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm a nice guy, Pepe. That was, that was a wrong sound effect to play. People are going to hate me for that. You can't push that button. You can't, you can't push that button, Pepe. That's not proper. There, th some of them are my friends. You can't, you can't do that. Don't, don't do that. <laughs> Pepe, start the show. Pepe, start the show. So bad. He's so bad. He's so bad. Hey, y'all. Space Dad here. Processing your feedback while in the middle of development is a monumental task. It's uh, no secret that the Star Citizen community has no shortage of opinions, and your tireless efforts in testing the persistent universe at all levels, from Evocati to PTU to even our live alpha environment, requires multiple initiatives to ensure that valuable feedback is properly received. Valuable feedback, constructive feedback, don't be a douche. Don't be a douche. When you're doing your bug reports, make sure it's an actual bug. And also check other logs to make sure it's not a repeat. Oh, somebody already did that. That's that's the worst thing ever. Make sure it's one that's not been recorded a thousand times. Don't be a douche. You know? And do it a lot. Do it a lot so the game can get fixed faster. Here's here's the thing. People always talk to talk, but they don't walk to walk, right? When you're when you're down and you're doing missions and you're trying to blow up a ground turret and the turret's not receiving fire because there's some type of fucking um, error in the code or whatever the fuck's happening and the turret just stays there no matter how fucking much fucking fire you put down on that shit, report it. If it's already reported, don't report it. But maybe say something about the fact that, hey, maybe fix this quickly. You know, fix, fix, fix. Take those bugs out. Kill those bugs, man. We need somebody to come up in here with some serious bug spray. Fumigate this shit so that we can actually have good experiences. Okay? All right. Contribute. That's all I'm trying to say. Exactly, Oz. Exactly. Whether that's the developers right. themselves right. spending their time. Because everybody loves to talk shit about the bugs, but nobody fucking does it. And, and a handful of people actually do it. And you know what? I'm involved with it. I hope you're involved with it. Definitely make sure to, if you see something that's fishy and, and you want better gameplay and you want fixes quicker, report that shit. Don't just be somebody that complains. Actively engage and be involved in it and quit being a fucking sideline complainer. Nothing is worse than a sideline complainer. Shame. 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 I mean, Spectrum, Reddit, Twitch, and YouTube to our growing community team and the likes of Ulf, Jake, Tamara, Christian, Christian, and more. Whew. As part of our continuing efforts to shine our proverbial spotlight on those folks who don't often get seen or heard from in traditional game dev spaces, we're changing up our origin story format this week to take a look at an entire team who's, who outside of Evocati, folks may not even know exists, uh, whose efforts, much like those that we've just mentioned, is dedicated to collecting processing, interpreting, and especially testing that feedback before passing it along to our developers for any potential action. 
So allow us to formally introduce you to the player experience. Okay, so they're going to introduce us to the team that's involved with this shit, and they're probably going to be all stressed out, losing their hair, blotchy as shit, uh, completely a mess. No, no, no. Wrecks of, a, wrecks of human beings. No. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Cash says it's either hype or gripe. That is so true, Cash. Dude, you are 110% on. Dude, it's got to be somewhere in the middle. You know, like, I am so tired of of the fucking extremes, man. It is so apparent to me today what's happening in content creation where people are just, like, going over the top fucking one way or the other. They're, like, super fucking, woo, this is the best thing since sliced fucking bread. Or they're, like, oh, this fucking shit. What the fuck? There's a whole bunch of middle right there, man. And, like, I am so tired of the fucking bullshit on, on both ends of the extreme. It, I, I don't know, but it seems to be working for these people, and it really bothers me. It bothers me that people continually support people that go to one extreme or the other, whether it's the, the fucking white knights, whether it's the naysayers. It's really starting to bother me on a very deep level that these people have the most views, that these are the people, and, like, it, it just speaks volumes about humanity. It speaks volumes about the type of fucking character of a, of a human being and like what humans are devolving into. Like they're devolving. It's like Gollum. It's like Gollum under the fucking misty mountains, man, holding onto that ring and just like completely putrid and the skin's falling off of Gollum. But can't let go of the fucking ring, man, because you're going in one camp or the fucking other camp. It's really disgusting, man. Like it just it makes me think like what the fuck is happening with humanity that they're just going to these extremes and they don't realize that there's a whole discussion to be had like in the middle because nobody's got any fucking patience for it. Because nobody's got intelligence for it. Because nobody wants to have like rational fucking discussion about it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dutch. Right, man. It's gross. It's gross. Thank you. <laughs> Dutch. I happen to like Gollum. Listen, nothing against Gollum, man. You know, Gollum had his, you know, Gollum had his utility, right? His utility was he was a human sacrifice. God bless Gollum. If Gollum didn't exist, he would have been thrown into the fucking volcano and the ring would never have been destroyed. Thank you, Gollum, for being the magical, putrid sack of shit that got thrown into a volcano. We appreciate you. Thank you, Gollum. Experience team. In player experience, we're basically one of the many voices of the players. The reason why a player experience team matters the most because not compared to other teams. <laughs> player experience actually takes the feedback from the community. Did she just random? Did she just cut in a random laugh? I'm I'm kind of I was like, hold on, I gotta watch this again. The reason why a player experience team matters the most because not compared to other teams. <laughs> player experience actually. I don't understand that. Takes the, the editing on that community actually understands the bugs that the live environment is facing and we'll use those to make the game better okay all right i give this this whole team like the, they all need a raise right off the bat i don't even know these people yet but to, but the even the fact that they smiled and they had like some type of positive vibe after like like you know what i mean could you imagine doing this like if this was your job would you jump out a fucking window <laughs> like i don't think i could handle the job the fact that they were even smiling and laughing and seemed somewhat positive like that that's pretty amazing a day in the life of player experience team is all over the place actually <laughs> Sorry, i have to laugh we uh almost don't know exactly i, I don't know that's a tough one damon like you know here's the thing i'm working from home i'm saving money on gas right i can eat i can eat in my boxers that all sounds good I can watch porn whenever I want. You know, the, the, these are all things that are great about working from home, right? But then the alternate reality is that I also have to help, like, people who are upset about a video game. Now, let's just think about this for a second, right? I'm eating. I'm eating chili. I'm doing what I want. Oh, this is the best job in the world. Ugh. Okay. Oh, complaint. Okay, gotta type, gotta type, gotta type. Oh god, this person's really pissed off. Oh my god, this is fucking draining as fuck. It's okay, I'm saving gas money. I'm saving gas money. I'm working from home. Everything's cool. All right, 
Maybe I'll just, uh, maybe I'll just watch a little highlight over here on YouTube. Okay. Oh, I got to get back to work. Oh wait, another, another one. Oh God. Oh God. Like I think over time, what would end up happening is I probably would want to get out of the fucking house. That That's where I'm saying, Damon, I think, I think after time passes, I might want to get out of the house. Uh, Duchess, do you think these people play the game in their free time as well? I don't know. Maybe we're going to find out. Let's find out. Doing that day? We're kind of like they better. the late crew here. We start our day at 2 p.m. To be able to uh, play alongside players when these... They start... When do they start? Hold on a second. The late crew here. We start our day at 2 p.m. To be able to uh, play alongside players when these builds go out. Beyond there, uh, our day can exist from reviewing features that are upcoming. We go to the issue council, we check to see what bugs have been reported in the latest builds. One of our main objectives is taking those issues through the issue council um, and seeing if we can produce it in game. Sometimes we get uh, what are called QATRs, uh, QA test requests from devs. We report on those bugs, we tell developers here's what our findings were and, and how we got to the bugs and here's what didn't work and what did work and try all types of... Okay, okay. The, the, can we just report physics as a bug? Can we just lump all of physics and put it together as one giant bug? You know, that's the one thing that pisses me off still is the physics grid, man. Like, everything seems like light as a feather at certain times and not really part of reality. You know, there's there's a lot of times the immersion is completely broken for me. The physics grid is all over the fucking map. When when ships are landing and they do this like little flutter dance, this little this little flutter dance, you know, like every time I start to see any type of like physics bug, <sighs> it just makes me start feeling like. Weird and interesting ways of breaking the game. Where are the gap between the players and the developers? Working alongside the community team to make sure that your feedback gets heard. There's traditional QA and we have the live QA from the player experience team. Traditional QA takes care of upstream features as they're getting developed. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. It makes me feel like, can I do two at the same time? I don't think I can do two at the same time. Can I do two at the same time, Pepe? Thank you, Oz. I didn't know I could do that until you. Thank you, Oz. You made me realize that we literally have magic here. It's magical. It's magical. The board's starting to pay off. The board is actually starting to pay off here. Pepe, it took three and a half weeks, but I think we're starting to nail this shit down, man. I think we're starting to nail this shit down. Experience actually attack things from a player experience. Thank you, Wux. Yes, you can. Thank you, Wux. I appreciate you very, very much. Listen, this is the best thing that's ever happened to me, this board. At first, I was very angry. We know this. I went off for an hour about this. I had a tirade about this board. Okay. But now... After much, much time invested, <laughs> it seems to be paying off. It seems to be paying off, Pepe. What do you think? Pepe, what do you think? Pepe? Pepe. Wake up, Pepe. Pe Pepe. If you go in through the motions that a player would go through to try to target the issues in a way that Dev QA probably wouldn't be able to reproduce. Oh, we got it. You missed it. Some of us take you a look missed it. The specialization Fart sound is the in. Game. Uh, Let them know, like fam. I Let them know. Into specialization of medical gameplay, so I could see the ins and outs. I focus a lot of my time on mining and trading issues. Other members of the team love to dogfight. Some people love to do FPS it? combat or missions yes. or bounty hunt. It's uh, all over the place. So we have a great spread, and we kind of you know what else is all over the place? The physics. <laughs> Let's fix it. Get to have fun doing what we are excited to do. 
I think the main thing that I would want backers to know about um, our job and what our team does is that, you know, we're listening to your feedback. Our team itself is actually quite full of backers. It kind of helps me put myself in their shoes rather than just look at the data and make a decision based off that data and not necessarily. Okay, how many people think these people actually, like, you know, they're, they're putting on a good show right now. They have to. They got to put their smiley faces on, right, for the show. But you know deep down Brad Vincent is fucking pissed off like Brad Vincent here's this is this is literally this literally how I feel like Brad Vincent's given us one thing but inside he's like take a big step step back back and literally fuck your own face I feel it I feel it's there I feel it's there Brad Vincent you're not kidding me I I see right through you Brad Vincent (laughs) necessarily gameplay you know, a, a joke made on the team a lot is that it's uh, Uh-oh. Easier, easier to learn uh, QA than it is to learn Star Citizen. Um, so, you know, I already had my pet peeve bugs I wanted fixed. I already knew how the issue oh, look, I, I feel like I'm in one of the boxes. I think it's important players do know that my pet... Uh, hey, hi, guys. I'm in the Google Meet right now. Hey, hey, Peter. How are you doing today? Okay, Brad, Brad, Bradley, Sam. Hey Sam, do, 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 do. I feel like I'm in Hollywood Squares right now. This is this is awesome. Hi, <laughs> like uh, pick me for the X. Pick me, <laughs> pick me. <laughs> Hi, why isn't anybody talking? You're all frozen. It's very strange. Hey everyone, guys, why is everybody frozen in the? Uh, hello, is damn it? Is there something wrong, Pepe? Pepe, is there something? The brave. <laughs> oh, peeve bugs I wanted fixed. I already knew how the issue council worked. I think it's important players do know <laughs> that we see the issues. We see the issue council. Uh, we have some automated systems, and sometimes your issue council might say not a bug. I was good But cash. we are tracking it, and we are aware of it. Uh, we go back manually and open them up <laughs> when we see that happen, and we do want to address it and get it into the hands of the developers. No, I'm not the reason your ship got nerfed. Might be actually responsible for that a little bit. Uh, don't put that in there, please. <laughs> I know the Aries <laughs> he doesn't want to die. Is, uh, been brought up before. Whenever we're looking to make changes What's up, to ships, Tommy? it's a very much involved process with a lot of decision makers. We translate the concerns that players have and bring those into uh, the developers' awesome, eyes. So, in essence, we're just the messengers. It wasn't me. What's up, Calvin? It wasn't me. <laughs> we're gonna have fun tonight. We've got one thing I want everyone to know. Is, uh, we're all um, very much upset at everybody's fucking bullshit and we're going to retaliate now like this guy looks like like th- this he's gonna get upset th- you do not want to piss this dude off right here man this this motherfucker he will haunt you in your dreams do not piss this guy off okay don't do it passionate about how oh, this passionate? project is run because we absolutely right, believe passionate. and love the project being able to interact with a very dedicated community definitely allows us to gain a lot of insight into what the game should be and what the community envisioned the game to be. In the end, they, they're the ones who are really supporting the game. And they're the ones who are playing the game and we're making a game for people to play it and have fun. And um, I think that's, that's the most. And then, like, that'd be great if in the kitchen you saw his, like, mom making a sandwich. He's like, Mom! Mom! Get out of the shot, Mom! <laughs> important part of it people are at the heart of the star citizen experience both from you outside and those within and in the case of the player experience team often the same folks transitioning from one to the other and up next it's time for another sprint report oh, so let's shit. get it sprint report let's start things off with these new docking areas being created for our high-tech space Thank stations you, like august dunlow found in the orbit stash, above bro. the planet the stash, Now, while docking came online a little while ago, several space stations and their respective archetypes still needed this work to enable docking at all the stations of the Stanton system. (laughs) Next up, let's check in with the Drake Corsair and these gray box images of the mess hall interior, which looks... Drake Corsair, look at that. Look at the interior right there. Drake Corsair. Mm, Drake, 
best manufacturer ever. Only manufacturer that matters, Drake. Drake Corsair. Mm, no, no spot. Oh, oh, we thought of, we thought of another one. Hold on. Pepe, I need the drop list. Where's the drop list? We have we need the sound drop list right now. No, no spot engaged. What how could we not think about this? This is definitely no no spot engaged. Thank you. Thank you, Pepe. You see, we're thinking, we're thinking things. We're thinking things and doing stuff. That is the motto of this channel. Here at DG360, we are thinking things and doing stuff. Thank you. This has been a DG360 announcement. To take some of its cues from what you may already be familiar with from the Drake Caterpillar. There's also the cockpit Man, that looks where good. spend most of their time and an up-close look at the dashboard. And finally, a look at perspective pilot visibility. Mm -hmm. We've also got these looks at the Drake Vulture, which is currently rounding out final oh, art phase with some me. liveries. Let's go ahead and do one of those social media quizzes in the comments. Which one is your favorite? One, two, three, Wow. Or four. Whoa, 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 whoa. One. Whoa, 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 whoa. Rounding out final art phase with some perspective liveries. Whoa, 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 Let's whoa, go whoa. Ahead. You know what time it is? I know what time it is. What time is it, fam? It's slow-mo time. Got that fucking right, Pepe. Get us over into slow-mo time, Pepe. And do one of those social media quizzes in the comments. Which one is your favorite? One? Two? That has been slow-mo time on Inside Star Citizen Review. Thank you for that, Pepe. You did a wonderful job. You did a wonderful job, Pepe. Everybody, please, please, a little bit of applause. Good job, Pepe. You're doing good work. I'm giving you a compliment. Doesn't happen very often. Don't, don't get used to that shit, Pepe. Don't get used to it. Pepe, don't get used to it. You suck. Oh, thank you, Jilted. Thank you, Dad. That was for me. That was for me, Jilted. Or that was for me, Pepe. Jilted did that for me. Not for you, Pepe. Not not for <laughs> I, I feel like I wanna go back and rewatch that in slower motion. Pepe, can we have a slow slow mo mode? No? No, you can't do that? God damn it. It was a good idea. I just thought it. People will copy it. People will copy it. It'll happen. Watch slow mo time. Watch it. People will copy it. People will copy it. People will do much better than I do, even though the idea came from the banana fountain. It came from the banana fountain. Uh, and from brand new ships to those that have seen better days, let's take another look at the continuing people development just joining, of our like upcoming what? reclaimer derelicts. Now, as part of the work our Montreal team is doing, most derelicts will fall into one of three categories old, new, and inhabited. And as part of those inhabited, you can see here preliminary work on housing modules to be found both outside and within the wreckage itself. Tech is also being developed to allow the overall object container that contains the derelict within to pick up biome information from wherever it's dynamically spawned. Yes. That means if it's spawned in snow, it gets snow covering. Yes. Or in this case, ivy and a variety of plant growth. What the fuck? This is exactly what we asked for when we saw the wreck episode. This is exactly what we wanted when we asked for fucking more to be done with wrecks. Is it like slowly and surely like fauna and shit would grow all over it and match the fucking area? Wow. 
Wow. <laughs> All right. All right. That's pretty fucking cool. That's pretty fucking cool. The team is also <laughs> building up a new library of derelict shaders for various states of decomposition. And when all this is brought together, it'll mean a greater variety of points of all interest right. for you to discover and new mission areas spawned once you accept the job. All, right. all dynamically placed and dressed as needed. Nice! And wow. before we move on, a short video look at the interior habitable spaces currently being fleshed out. Wow! Wow, that's so fucking cool. And then lastly, let's take a look at current VFX progress on the handheld salvage beam we discussed oh! on last week's Star Citizen oh! Live with my Oh my god, are they going to implement this with Rex naturally? Oh my god, please do that. Please do that as well. Oh my god, please, 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 please. They're going to make it a fucking attachment to your fucking multi-tool and you'll be able to salvage it hand hand salvaging. Holy shit, what is happening here, Pepe? What is happening? I'm loving it. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. They're doing exactly what the fuck I wanted them to do. This is great. This is good stuff. This is good stuff. Mike Snowden. Now, while it's important to state that this effect you're seeing here you is guys better not be putting DG360 final, repeat, in the Rex. not final, and this is a showcase only of the VFX involved, I think, I hope we can all agree. You feeling that? Tex feeling that. It does. It does a little bit. Right. It does, Tech. Tech, this is awesome shit, man. Like how salvage is being introduced right now. Look, salvage is going to like be a big thing for the game. There are some people out there, you know, they were poo-pooing it. They were they were poo-pooing it. I won't say names, but it, but it, but it rhymes with with smurf colleges. And he was saying that nothing would happen in 2022 that there would be no game development. He was kind of like it was like there was, there was a lot of that going on in that video that I saw. There was a lot of that. And then I just was like this. I was like, take a big, take step, a big back step back and literally fuck you on face. And I said, no, no, there's going to be development happening. And it seems like possibly that's actually what's happening. You know, <laughs> go figure <laughs> with that many employees. And, uh, you know, there's work, there's work being done. So in 2022, that that actually, you know, <laughs> things are happening. This is still really cool as heck. I mean, just look at this thing. The way the particles are being atomized and sucked up off the hull of the ship. I'm going to tell you, I just kind of sat and watched wow. this on loop for about five minutes straight and wow. was thoroughly mesmerized. In fact, Amanda, oh, let's change up the God, music and that's just let awesome. this play out for a bit. Really get our zen on. I said get our zen <laughs> <laughs> you're messing with me there we go there we go right right cash i'm calling people out for when when they say shit that's absurd i'm just calling them of out of course we'll learn more about salvage ship based and handheld next quarter ahead of its much anticipated introduction to the persistent universe wow Wow, so what that's, did we that's this awesome. Week? Well, we learned that it takes quite a bit to keep up with the massive amount of feedback the players provide. Listen, here's the thing, too, guys. Don't hold back anymore. Like, it, how long have we been doing this already? Why are we pussyfooting around? Why? Why? Like, you know, to me, like, listen, I respect people, right? But some opinions are just so crazy. And, and to me, like, just step up and be like, this is fucked. Like, this is a fucked opinion, man. Like, there's there's nothing wrong with stepping up and standing up and just saying this, you know, these are fucked opinions. And do it. <laughs> like, if you, if you hear it, just be like, please. I, I think it has to do with lack of, like, real world experience or at least game development experience. There's so many people out there that want to get into this genre of content that know nothing about game development and they put their opinions and stamps on it and like people take it 
people take it for truth, man. It's a fucking dangerous thing. It's dangerous, man. It's like crazy what I'm seeing out there, you know? So it's great because we're actually seeing development here. It exists and uh, salvage is going to be huge for the game. Absolutely huge for the game. And it's going to be a lot of fun and it's going to add to uh, another layer to the economy. We have mining, we're going to have salvage and uh, we're going to watch something on the after party, which is really interesting on 3.17 where more developments happening and Pappy came down. Uh, Mr. Pappy has some interesting news for us at, on the after party we're going to get into that I'm actually looking forward to, um, you know, <laughs> cash. And then it's all hands on deck with the developers, the community team, the player relations team and more to do it. And I'm going to name drop the customer service team and the concierge team because they deserve a shout out too. Uh, that derelicts are shaping up to bring new gameplay opportunities yes. through old and busted I love spaceships. It. I love it. And that the day when we can leave messages for others in the hull of a abandoned spacecraft using the <laughs> handheld salvage gun are close at hand. What will you write first? For Inside Star Citizen, Extreme I'm Jared Huckabee. We'll bash. see you all next week. The value added gameplay, man, it never really stops. You know, it might go slower than a lot of people want. But it actually happens. And when people start bitching and they say it's taking so fucking long, remember, it's not Cloud Imperium's fault. Of course, there's fucking managerial shit. There's communication shit within the business model that, like, waylay shit. You know, every business has that shit. I'm not giving it excuses. That shit happens all the fucking time. But when it comes down to it, the only thing that's taken so long for is our imagination. We want a game that gives us every fucking thing that it can. And this is the game... That, that apparently is the game that we're going to try it on. This is the game where we finally say, hey, we want everything we can imagine, and we want it all in one game. Guys, I've been doing this for six years. I've been following this project for a very long time. I'm a fucking veteran. And there's been times I've been angry. There's been times I've been happy. There's been times in between. But the whole fucking time I've been following it because it's absolutely fascinating to me that we're actually going to try, try, and we might succeed to make a game that captures our entire imagination of what we want in a game, which is just about everything that you can imagine, all styles of gameplay. So that is worth watching. That is worth the journey. And thank you for being here with me tonight on the Inside Star Citizen Review, everybody. Give yourself, listen to me, I'm so proud of everybody here. The original Inside Star Citizen Review, there's a lot of ripoffs out there. <laughs> there's a lot of people out there trying to do what we're doing, right? They're taking the ideas from the old banana fountain. That's something we made up here only an hour ago. We, we literally... Okay, no, don't talk about the banana fountain. Okay, they're trying, though. They're trying to take bananas from the banana fountain. But this is the fountain. The fountain never runs out of bananas. Okay, never. No, no, that's not. I can't. Okay, after party happening. If you're watching on YouTube, break the algorithm, push the like button, and please, please, let us just, let us put down all these copycats. Like, the copycats don't deserve to do better than we are. We thought of this. Years and years ago, we were doing this first. If if people who are copying me are doing better, what the fuck does that say about you? What does that say about me? That's a terrible thing. I don't even want to explore that because it shouldn't be happening. No, no, it shouldn't. <laughs> All right, everyone. Time for the after party. Thank you. Thank you, Batal. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you. <laughs> we need we need a banana fountain actually. Yes, we'll we'll work on it. We're gonna do it. We're gonna we're gonna do it. First stream, welcome, Batal. Good to have you, buddy. Welcome to your first live stream. And I'm glad you're here because we're going to the after party mode. After party it up, Pepe. And thanks for watching. If you're watching on YouTube, click on that like button, subscribe, do all the things that help us out here as a community. Thank you so much. Have a great night. And guys who are live, let's do it. Let's have some fun. Thank <laughs> you.